Hi again then guys and welcome to of course another car review from the 1.45 selection in GT Sport and this one is of course a car that we don't see that often being added to the game but it's one of my favourite genres of performance car and that is of course classic American muscle. So few of these, far too few of these are added to the game as far as I'm concerned and of course there are always people who say in the comments of every new trailer and silhouette video Oh we have too many classics, we have too many road cars, we want more race cars, that's what the game's all about Well yeah sure, but speak for yourself, <laughs> there are many of us who do want those classic cars and I'm glad that they do continue to add them because this is a great car for muscle fans and also because we haven't had the car before as far as I know in the entire franchise if I recall correctly at least now of course the car's shape its style its era its inspirations all are similar to cars that we do know and love like the Charger the Roadrunner etc but it has a slightly different twist because for one thing there are two deceptive things about this car or at least two things which aren't the way that you would think they are and that is that based on the size of the vehicle, you'd probably assume two things. It's got a very big engine, and it's probably very heavy. Look at the Chevelles, the Chargers, that's kind of the way they are. Neither is true of this car. It's actually not that big an engine by muscle car standards, a 6.3 litre V8. It's not even overly powerful by muscle car standards with 335 horsepower, 425 pound-feet of torque. But to make up for that, it's not heavy either. Because if you were to put this next to, for instance, the new Camaro ZL1 and, let's say, a Charger Hellcat that's already in the game, you would safely assume it's probably somewhere between the two. Which, in other words, means between 1.7 and 2 tonnes. The reality is, this is 1.5. 1,533 kilos seriously undercuts both of those other cars. In fact, it's literally around half a tonne lighter than the Hellcat. That is a huge difference for a car that looks like this. Now, of course, I already mentioned in my overarching video discussing the 1.45 update and my initial thoughts that this one was probably my favorite car of the vehicles added. In terms of handling, it's so much fun. And I'm very pleased to say that a few days on after driving it more, as you can see in this video for instance, I still feel that way. It's easily my favourite car of the pack in terms of just pure driving pleasure, and as I mentioned in that video, I deliberately tuned it to make it handle in a ridiculous way. Lifting its wheels through every corner, flipping over on curbs, 700 horsepower, just stupid. It's a silly tune, that's the whole point. Essentially I did to it what I do to my off-road muscle cars, but I tried to use it on the road instead. So great fun, I knew it would be that bad, and that was the whole point. However, if you compare the way that it was handling in that video to the way that this one is handling and performing here, you'd probably think, wow, he must have, you know, radically altered the suspension, maybe still running the same kind of power to beat these cars. Actually, no. This is way less powerful. That car had 700 horses or so. This is N500 going up against N500 cars, and it's beating them handily. Now, of course, it's AI, but still, you can gauge a good idea, at least, of how good a car's going to be by putting it up against the AI. For instance, over the course of a Nürburgring lap, there are usually certain cars that you might not catch up to. Now, in this race, for instance, it takes a bit longer to catch up to your Porsche GT3s and your Amuse S2000s, but again, this is a classic muscle car in the same category that these cars are in, so you have next to no weight advantage, and you certainly don't have a power advantage, and yet it's still beating you. Now, again, it's AI, but you get the point. It's a very responsive car to tuning, and that is something which I've always maintained on the channel. Muscle cars get such a bad rap, especially from JDM fans, and of course, because they're rivals. But the thing about JDM versus muscle, and the reason why I have always been and will probably always be on the side of muscle, is that JDM cars just do all the work for you. Sure, you can tune them, but they're already good. And they're also a lot newer, <laughs> more often than not, so they've got way more tech involved, whereas muscle cars they're so raw and basic and old school. And the result of that is that I would argue it takes more skill to put in a good lap time with a muscle car. But also, the differences that you see when you tune a muscle car are worlds apart to with a JDM. If you were to give someone a challenge of taking, and in fact I used to do this on the channel in the Sleeper Spec series, if you take a JDM car like a Skyline or a Supra, and you're not allowed to do anything to the power or to the weight, or even to the tyres, you can only adjust settings like suspension and gearing, 
then take it around the Nordschleife, you'll notice a difference of maybe around 10-15 seconds. If you do that same challenge in something like this Coronet, it will be a massive difference. I'm talking 30, maybe even 45 seconds, probably even more, maybe even around a minute faster without any power or weight difference at all, just giving it a better gearbox and tuning the suspension because that is how responsive they are. They're so old school that when you apply modern theories and modern techniques to them, they are, <laughs> they love it. <laughs> they, they respond so well to it. And that is also one of the reasons why I will always say that a muscle car is a very versatile machine. And a lot of people don't believe that. This one is a perfect example. It's big and it looks heavy, but it's not. You can use the Coronet as a drag car, to some degree a top speed car against other muscle cars at least. You can use it as a circuit car, as I'm showing here. You can certainly use it to have just silly fun, as I showed before, and you can definitely use it as a rally car as well. And I've done a number of rally tunes in this game, and muscle cars are deceptively good at rallying. Yes, they're big, yes, they're heavy, but they don't feel that way. As soon as you get them on the dirt, they feel like they're actually more at home there sometimes than on the street even, which is kind of ironic. Now, as far as the spec sheet, we already touched on some. 335 horsepower, 425 pound feet, 1,533 kilos, not a particularly big engine, 6.3 litre, naturally aspirated V8. And the pricing, it's technically a little bit more than the Camaro, but still, 80 grand is not very much at all. And across the board, I love the fact that we've got not just a new classic muscle car in the game, which of course is always welcome, but a new, new one. It's not just a returning one, it's a debut. And to be able to take a car like this up against the stalwarts of the franchise, if you will, like the Camaro, some of the relative newcomers like the Trans Am and others too, the Challenger of course, well that's nice. It's nice to be able to compare cars that actually would have been going up against each other in real life in the game when you haven't had that option before. So yeah, I love the Coronet. I'm really glad that they added this to the game. In terms of upper end potential, as I said, you're looking at around 700 horsepower, so you can quite comfortably transfer this car between N300 all the way up to N700. As I always say, be careful on the higher end, of course, because although it certainly has the power to win a race, choose your rivals and choose your tracks wisely because Again, it is a classic car, so even with the best tuning in the world, there's only so far you can make it, or so far you can push it, and so good that you can make it. So in the lower end, the power advantage, the weight advantage, especially over other muscle cars, will see you well, and it will do you well in a race. N300, N400, it's going to be naturally very good. Tighten up the springs, lower that center of gravity, put it on some better tires, maybe tune the diff a little bit, and give it an extra gear. That makes all the difference in the world to a muscle car because they're not great for top speed, at least with the original gearboxes. It's arguably the worst thing about classic muscle. They do not have good transmissions, that's for sure. They top out at like 120 miles an hour. In the game though, swap that out, change a couple things, you got yourself a great car. But ultimately, that's it for my thoughts on the Coronet Super B. I am very glad that they added this to the game. I wish, as I said before, that they would add more classic muscle cars, but at least this is better than nothing. So I'd love to hear your thoughts on the car down below. And of course, until next time, I'll see you then. But for now, as always, thanks for watching.